Today, America's extensive use of fossil fuels has become highly controversial. For that reason, it's in no way surprising that our energy policy has truly become a hot button issue. As the Energy Tribune of March 5, 2009 points out, Barack Obama has laid out an ambitious agenda for reforming the way we in America deal with energy. Many people believe, though, that his policies are unrealistic, while others contend they're essential either way. What we as Americans have to keep in mind, though, is our long-term economic prosperity depends in part on how well we can manage our energy resources. And for that reason, it makes sense to ask today's question. What steps should the United States take to reform our energy approach? And the answer is we must put forth a comprehensive strategy geared towards our long-term success. And this really has to focus on three key areas. First, there must be a major push for energy diversification. Second, we must improve our energy processing apparatus. And finally, the United States must begin to think globally in terms of energy. But first of all, we need to realize that something that's essential is simply going to be energy diversity. This has to be our top priority for the simple reason that because we rely so heavily on fossil fuels, particularly petroleum, in an energy sense, we're putting all of our eggs in one basket. Given volatility geopolitically and also economically, this is inherently bad policy, and several things must be done to correct it. First of all, the United States must maintain significant levels of new investment when dealing with investing in alternative energy. As the New York Times of March 4, 2009 illustrates, recently the Department of Energy has been working hard to explore new energy possibilities. Some of the possibilities they're looking at are things like expanding solar power, hydroelectric power, geothermal power, and also investing in switch gra grass ethanol. These are all new approaches not only which are good for our environment, which many people say is essential in the long run, but also because they make sure that fossil fuels are not the only route we can go. But in addition, we also have to put aside some psychological hang-ups and realize that a marginal, sensible increase in the, in the amount of nuclear power we utilize could be in the long run incredibly beneficial. What we see with nuclear power is for a long time, as the Christian Science Monitor points out, the debate over nuclear waste and how to deal with it has been the primary hang-up. The fact is, though, Yaka Mountain does not have to be a reality. In France, for instance, all but 0.7% of nuclear waste is recycled and used again. At the same time, with modern safety techniques, which aren't necessarily cheap, but definitely effective, we can ensure that things like Three Mile Island or worse, Chernobyl, don't happen. Of course, safety is a major concern. We have to make sure that nuclear power plants are away from urban centers. But because we are able to sensibly increase how we use nuclear power, we can produce an energy source that is on one hand very clean and also incredibly beneficial. And what all this really means is by making sure we can expand the different types of energy we use, we can help to shield ourselves from future shocks in the market. We don't have major spikes in oil. And also we can make sure that we don't simply run out of things we need to power our cities and our way of life. But second, we have to look at something a bit more innate. Something that's absolutely imperative is making sure that our energy usage, app, that our overall apparatus is being used in an effective way. What we've seen, like our road system for instance, is the way in which we make energy get from a power plant to our homes or our businesses has really become dilapidated. Something we must do is we must make sure we're expanding our refining capabilities. This has been a major problem. Since the 1970s, no new power plant has been built. Only recently, one in South Dakota has been started, and that won't be finished until 2017. We have to make sure this changes. Recently, what we've seen is Bloomberg News of March 4, 2009 points out, is several of the top refining plants in Nigeria are being privatized. This has caused a lot of concern in America for the simple reasons that if we don't have foreign countries to refine our oil, it's going to be very hard to do it. And thus, any shock, even in a country like Nigeria, can be incredibly worrisome. This really starts to paint a picture how critical it is to make sure we have better refineries, to make sure we have the adequate pipelines, not just for oil, which is imperative because fossil fuels will be around for a long time, but also for energy alternatives. Because if we begin to expand to things like ethanol, making sure our refining capabilities are up to date and our pipelines are going to be essential for that too. In addition though, we also have to make sure that America's power grids are definitely modernized. What we're seeing is optimization of kilowatts per hour is hardly what they should be. A lot of our power lines are simply outdated. And for that reason, a lot of power is being lost in transmission. We need to make sure that's changed as well. What all of this does 
is it makes sure we are maximizing the potential energy we can have. And this is going to help to realize that even though energy is not a cheap commodity, we can be efficient about how we use it. But finally, we have to look at the big picture of this as well. Something that's absolutely essential, given the globalized nature of energy, is to realize that we have to begin to branch out more effectively to other countries. One country America must work with much more closely on energy is Canada. Canada is America's largest importer of petroleum. We get more from there than any other country on Earth. For that reason, we have to make sure we have close ties with Canada. We need to cooperate with them more effectively on things like oil pipelines in Alaska and the Yukon territories. And also, because the Canadian government is beginning significant increases in its own research into alternative energies, we should cooperate with them more effectively on that front as well. But in addition to just Canada, we should look across the pond. What we've recently seen is what's known as the European Energy Cooperation Sphere. In Europe, it was created as a mechanism to protect them from Russian petro-authoritarianism. But what we've also seen is sharing of resources and a market created which is advantageous to the growth and diversification of new forms of energy. The United States should work more closely with European countries. As the Washington Post of March 5, 2009 points out, recently European officials have begun to actually counsel certain American officials on how to deal more effectively with environmental policies. It doesn't just have to be the environment. When it comes to how we deal with our environmental approach to energy or just our economic approach to energy, reaching out to other countries is imperative in the long run. Looking back at all of this, the United States must put forth a comprehensive, long-term approach to energy by really focusing on the types of energy we have, how we use it, and also how well we work with others. Energy, given its significance, should be a top button issue. And it's incredibly imperative that we put our best minds to work to ensure a brighter future.